Hello Nintendo We here, welcome back to Let's Play Retro Games and today I'm very excited to be playing F-Zero Climax for the Game Boy Advance. It never came out outside of Japan so I'm really really happy to own this and I'm really excited to share some gameplay with you guys so let's get straight into it. So here we go, F-Zero Climax, the final game in the F-Zero in the F-Zero series and it's been 2004, 2004, 2017. It's been 13 years since the last F-Zero game. That's crazy. So here we go, this is the main menu. It's really colourful, as you can see. There's a few different options. You've got Grand Prix, you've got Survival, which is um, similar to F-Zero GX, I think. There's Edit Mode, which is fantastic and a unique feature to this game, which is the ability to actually create your own F-Zero tracks. It was in F-Zero X for the 64DD system, but obviously that never came out outside of Japan either. And that's another thing that I really hope to get one, one day. There's also a time attack mode, no need to explain that. There's options and there's multiplayer communication. So let's jump into Grand Prix and I haven't actually finished the game yet. So let's try standard on the Platinum Cup because that's the one that I'm up to. So you can see it's got a really cool comic book sort of aesthetic and it's got all your favourite characters so it's not like Maximum Velocity which has brand new characters. You don't need to know any Japanese to enjoy this game either, you can jump straight in and play it. Obviously it's just a racing game and there's quite a lot of English in it too so if you're thinking about importing it I really wouldn't worry about it. Definitely just go ahead and import it. And it's definitely worth importing because it's one of the best games in the whole series and it's such a shame that we never got it. I presume it's because it came out quite late in the GBA's life and the DS was already on the horizon so they thought maybe uh, releasing another GBA game, especially one with Mode 7 graphics so close to the DS coming out might sort of take away some of the marketing push that they had for the new system at the time. I don't really know but either way it's still a fantastic game and as you can see it's still lightning fast and controls brilliantly, although maybe I'm not showing that. Uh, they also brought back the new booster mechanics from F-Zero GX so it's not really like Maximum Velocity where you have uh, one boost per lap like the SNES game. This is more like uh, F-Zero X or F-Zero GX where you have a set amount of boost that actually takes away your health as well and you have to recharge. I'm doing really badly, usually I'm, uh, I'm a lot better. Although well, I said that in the last episode as well so maybe I've just got worse with age but yeah, I used to be fantastic at the 2D F-Zero games, especially Maximum Velocity. I put so much time into that game, it was ridiculous. Absolutely mastered it. Gold cups on, uh, on master difficulty. The trick to the 2D F-Zero games, although I'm not really showing it off very well. I count 10th, I can't believe that. What was I saying? The trick is to use the L and R, the shoulder buttons, to sort of uh, lean into the corners, but as well as doing that, tap the accelerator as you're going around the corner, and you sort of st stick to the track a bit better. Well, it doesn't seem to be working out too well for me. So here we go, here's a classic track, Big Blue. I wonder if it's got the same classic music from the SNES and uh, N64 game. Let's find out. Ah. What's the point of that, starting on the corner? and yeah I didn't have any uh, boost whatsoever. But yes it does have the uh, the original music so that's great. I think they slightly tweaked the controls in this one because it doesn't seem as slidey as the other 2D F-Zero games. If you know what I mean, like you can actually sort of turn the corner and not fly into the other side of the wall without having to use the air brakes. Maybe it's a bit more beginner friendly but basically it's just more of the same which is no bad thing at all. Two laps to go. Two laps to go. Like and although the cars look 3D, I think they're actually still um, pre-rendered sprites just made to look 3D, not actually 3D models. And that means the game runs at a super smooth 60 frames per second, which is definitely needed in a game with such fast pace and I really need a health station else I'm going to blow up like that guy in front of me, he's about to blow up oh no okay I've got to be really careful this time 
can't believe I'm in sixth. I'm doing really badly, and this isn't even an expert difficulty. Come on, I've got to finish at least in the top three. Right, maybe it's not him being hurt. I think it might be him using his uh, using his boost power. So I don't know if you can hear the controller the tapping, but that's me tapping the accelerator to go in the corner. A bit easier than normal, but yay fourth, not too bad. Better than tenth at least. Uh, guys, if you've got any suggestions, what videos you want me to do, what games you want me to play in the future, let me know in the comments, and I'll uh, I'll try and get around to doing it. I'm, I'm always up for new recommendations as well, so if it's a game I haven't heard of, I'll go and check it out on eBay. Might might pick it up and do a video about it. Maybe you'll get a mention as well. So let me know if there's anything you want to see, or if you don't like these kind of videos, let me know as well, and I, I'll think about going back to the old retro game a week style. But for the time being, though, these sort of videos are a lot easier to produce. I don't have to spend so much time editing as I did before, which is good considering I've got quite a lot going on at the moment and I've got a game that I'm making as well as I'm sure you've been seeing the updates for that and that's coming on really well fingers crossed it'll be complete by the end of the year and I'll be uh, advertising it a bit on here and I'll let, you, let all you guys know when it's been released and if you want to keep updated until then follow Super Donuts Game on Twitter I'll put a link in the description but that's where I'm posting like all my dev updates for the game so if you are interested or if you just want to see what I get up to in my time when I'm not at work then go and check out that Twitter page or if you just want to watch me play more games then subscribe on Twitter subscribe on YouTube and I came sixth again I think I came sixth in the last round I really got to try and focus more I'm not doing very well I'm just rambling on so still sixth overall and I think there's three more races to go Port Town, another classic. So you can see they went back to the original SNES style for these courses. Although they seem to start in really weird positions, like why is this starting point on the corner? I guess it's the harder levels in the game because it's quite far on and the tracks do seem a bit narrow as well. Although I haven't really had much trouble with bumping into other people, it's just I'm not going very fast. I can't really explain why. Maybe it's because I picked the Blue Falcon and it's not the best machine. Oh dear, that's not good. One thing that I find is missing in this game, it's a really, really little nitpick nitpicky thing, but when you use the air brake, the car doesn't actually lean to the side like it did in the F-Zero GP Legend, which is a bit of a downgrade in my opinion, so I'm not really sure why they didn't include that animation, because I quite liked it before. I'd, I'd sort of keep wiggling it. Oh, that's something new for this game as well, which I just did by mistake, I haven't been doing it at all. If you press L and then R, one after the other, you can actually do a spin attack, which is used for survival mode, where you have to hit the opponents off the track. And you can also double tap the L and R buttons to do a shunt like that, to shunt the opponents into the wall. But you don't really get much chance to do that, at least in the normal races. I tried to do it there, I think I missed. But again, it's really useful for the survival mode, and I suppose for multiplayer as well, if you're playing against your friends and you just want to be a bit of an idiot and hit them. Yeah, I don't really use that too much, but I guess it could be useful for some of the tracks, like if you're trying to make a really, really sharp turn, then you could double tap the LRR buttons to get around it a little bit quicker. But it's not really ideal, it's probably best to do the tapping thing like I was saying. Or maybe not, because that might happen. And I'll show you the level editor, which is one of the main reasons that people would probably want to pick this game up, because it's the only F-Zero game that's actually affordable that has a level editor. So we'll go and take a quick look at that. I don't know who that Kensuki is. He must have been the guy who owned the game before me. So let's go to edit. Um, I'll make a new one, so edit, new data. And you get to choose the sort of track that you want. They all play the same, but they give you a different sort of background and theme. And then you've got the pieces up here, and you can choose how big you want it, so let's start with... Oh, and I didn't realise at first, I thought it was just this square that you can see in the stage, but actually, if you look at the bottom left, it's actually a lot bigger than that. So let's uh, put a few straight bits down.
and okay. And then you can give it a name, so I'll call this L B R G. Let's play retro games. And then this is the level that we actually just made. And you can test it out, and then obviously you could, if you knew anyone else with the game, you could play it against your friends. It's just so cool to be able to actually make your own F-Zero tracks. Or maybe I should have put a few more obstacles in, because it seems pretty empty. I'm not sure why there'd be ice on a lava level, but don't question it, it's just a proof of concept. Maybe if I've got more time one day I'll make a better level and share it with you guys. You can definitely see how it works, so it works really well. And I would love to play the F-Zero X one, one day. I think that would be amazing. I've definitely got to get a 64 disc system at some point. I know they're super expensive and there's not many games worth playing on it, but for that and I guess Doshin the Giant, Animal Crossing, SimCity, Mario Artist series, there's a few interesting things. I'm not sure if Animal Crossing did come out on it or if it was just planned to. I know that um, Ocarina of Time Master Quest was supposed to come out for it and so was Majora's Mask, as well as some others like uh, I think Earthbound. I don't really know. But anyway, there we go. I'll leave it there. Thank you very much for watching. Subscribe for more videos and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.